Lake Seminole uh, and Jim Woodruff Dam was completed in 1957. Uh, its original authorized purposes were hydropower, navigation, and subsequently over the years, uh, recreation has been added through various acts of Congress as part of the overall uh, project purposes. Uh, the navigation aspect uh, was created to uh, provide navigation on the Apalachicola and Chattahoochee and Flint system uh, up the Flint River to Bainbridge and up the Chattahoochee system to Columbus. That also included a series of other dams, uh, George Andrews Dam uh, just above us and then above that was Walter F. George Dam. Uh, those dams are in Woodruff are the three navigation uh, dams on the system. Woodruff is the first one that was built in 1957, uh, followed uh, by, uh, I believe, Walter F. George and Andrews about the same time, uh, 1962 time frame. Uh, this dam has uh, three turbines that provide about uh, 43 megawatt hours uh, of generation uh, through the turbines. It's part of a, a network that ties into uh, power systems in the Florida area. Uh, and we work with the Southeastern Power Administration, which is the government marketing agency, to market the power generated here to preference customers, which are small utilities uh, located in rural areas. Uh, the energy generated from the, the project uh, helps to pay for the, the project itself. The revenues generated from the energy goes back to the U.S. Treasury, which in turn funds the project to provide the operation and maintenance. Uh, on the upper end of the system, uh, of course, uh, in the metro Atlanta area is the issue of water supply. Lake Lanier on the upper end of the system at the headwaters of the ACF system uh, provides uh, water supply for the metro Atlanta area, which has continued to grow. And uh, in the mid uh, to late 80s, uh, that became a contentious issue, which prompted the, the lawsuits against the Corps by the states of Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. And it's referred to as the Water Wars. And so to uh, try to meet the needs of that metro area, we've had to operate the projects to, to try to supply water supply while still meeting all the other project purposes. At the upper end of the system, you have several lakes that uh, support flood control and uh, water quality and water supply. So the entire system has to take a look at all those demands on the system and try to uh, meet those as best we can. Uh, during times of uh, increased flows like we're experiencing right now, where it's uh, kind of in the flood season, that's not a problem because you got adequate water. But when you get into the drought conditions, that's when the problems arise because there's just not enough water for every purpose to be fully met. Uh, for instance, during uh, droughts, navigation tends to uh, decline and become non-existent because there's just not enough water to support navigation. And then the other purposes, hydropower, uh, water supply, water, co water quality become limited uh, due to the, the drought conditions. And then it's a, a balancing act trying to meet those purposes and uh, be e equitable uh, to all the needs on the system. One of our biggest challenges here at the, at the project is uh, in the lake itself, uh, we have invasive uh, plants or, that are non-native species, hydrilla and uh, several other plants that tend to uh, inundate areas along the shoreline and uh, becomes a hazard for boaters and fishermen. And then during high water periods when this, all these grasses break loose, they start to uh, clog up the turbines and present a problem there. What you see uh, just in the tail race is uh, some remnants of uh, water hyacinths and other weeds that have come through the, the dam and, and found its way downstream. On the upstream side, uh, especially in the periods when it's really bad, it will be uh, so bad that they have to shut off the turbines, rake some of these uh, weeds out, and uh, pull them away from the turbines so that we can get the most efficient use of the turbines.